Say the Lord is with us. And how many of that's that's music to our ears? Huh? huh? Say it. The Lord is with us. How many know it's good to know that? Because the devil's a liar. He's a condemner. And uh, it's good to have Yamil and Jeff all the way from Houston visiting us today. And they'll be ministering tonight at the Bible College. So you Bible College students, make sure you show up and get to get blessed tonight. Amen. And, but it's good news, man. The Lord is with us. Say, the Lord is with us. And he's with, with us as our everlasting father. Say, our everlasting father. And, and, and our prince of peace. Prince of peace. In Mark 1, the scripture reads, and this is like a Christmas scripture. Behold, the virgin will be with child, and she'll bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Say, Emmanuel which is translated, come on, come on, come on. God with us. Just take a deep breath. Don't worry, you're not going to spread the COVID. Come on, sorry, just. <laughs> People are afraid of the COVID. Listen, if you got it, get over it. If you don't, believe not to get it. If you get it, get all right, get better. Don't, don't be all fearful. Don't live in bondage. He heals cancer and he heals COVID. Three claps on it. Like, like God can heal cancer, but he can't heal. Come on, somebody. A little COVID, but he can't. Come on. Come on. Don't, don't. Talk about God. Right, sit down, sit down, sit down. Okay. Number one. He's with us. Say he's with us. As everlasting father. Mm -hmm. I like that word everlasting, huh? So he's not just your papa today. He's going to be your papa forever. Thank God we have a papa forever. The same papa Jesus has, we have the same papa. Thank God, huh? Nobody thanks God for that? I do. I know my dad left me, so this is good news for me. What, what's good? What, what, you, know, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's good news. I, I just preach that. I'll, be, I'll preach myself happy right there. And say, and, and, and prince of peace. So don't worry. Don't worry. Which way are you going to go to me? Be happy. Or don't worry. Or don't worry about a thing. See? Uh, some of you are a weed head. I'm just kidding. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. I, I'm, I, don't get all mean, man. I'm happy. Don't bring me down. I've been, I'm under the anointing. I've been... I preached like three times. I'm feeling good right now. Don't bring me down, you know. What are you down about? You going to heaven? Jesus. You got to slap the devil out of here. No, we're going to break all that. Say amen. Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is what? Born. Is born. And a son is given. And that's, again, that's why we do God's best gift. It's, this is his birthday. And the government will be upon his shoulder. It's a big government he has. It's all over the world. It's massive. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. We're going to emphasize those two today. Say peace. peace. It comes from the Hebrew word shalom. Say shalom. Shalom. Shalom, right? It means safety. It means well or welfare or wellness. It means to make happy. That's what I'm talking about. Are you happy? Yeah. Yes. Yes, you have to be happy. You can't allow a pandemic to steal your joy. You can't be like the world. They're like this. You can't be like that. Because if you open the door to one area like that, you're gonna, before you know it, you're going to be afraid of everything. You can't live like that. You can't live bitter. You can't live angry. You can't live all resentful. You can't live all fearful. That's not your inheritance. You're free now. That's not you anymore. You're a child of God now. You're born again. You're washed in the blood. You're blessed. And you're highly favored. And everywhere you go, there's blessing and breakthrough. Because it follows you all the days of your life. Say, I'm happy. I'm healthy. See, I'm healthy. I'm healthy. Well, pastor, I got the COVID. Well, then get better. 
Oh, pastor, I got the flu. Get better. Pastor, they, get, they diagnosed me. Then believe God to get better. Use your faith not to get sick. Use your faith to get better if you get sick. Use your faith because you have a right to be physically healthy. Because he was wounded for your transgression. He was bruised for your iniquity. And the chastisement for your peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we were healed. And it means prosperity. That means no matter what happens, even in hard times, even in hard times, God still promise, promises to prosper his people. And over and over throughout the scripture, we find in the middle of famine, God prospering his people because God is our source. We don't depend on this world's economy. We don't depend on man. We are tithers. We are God lovers. And our Father in heaven provides for you. He provides for me. He provides for his people. Can I get an amen on that? Can I get a witness? All right. So Matthew 6, 25. And I want you to lean in because we're going to deal with the things, some things that I think are going to bring some freedom. Therefore, I say to you. Now, that's anybody, right, that believes. Do not worry about your life. All right? So is that a suggestion or a command? Come on. What is that? It's a command. So if I disobey that, then that's a sin. Right? And there's a reason why he's telling us this, because he knows that worry, and that worry is a powerful word because it means overcome with anxiety. It means to be anxious about the future or tomorrow, and it literally means to be distracted. And so we understand when the worry, worry, worry wart comes, worry comes, you have to see it as what it is. It's a slithery snake. See, it's a spirit. And some of those spirits are in your families. They can come through anybody in your family. They can come through your mom. They can come through your dad. They can come through your spouse. They can come through your children. They can come through anybody. They can come through your boss. They can come through media. They can come from anywhere, and you have to recognize what spirit are they of. They could be a Christian, yet be used by the devil to sow worry into your life. Because anytime worry is being spoken, you're being sown into, and a harvest is attached to that seed. And it's not blessing, it's always cursing. Now, you're not mean and judgmental to people, but you are discerning. Because you have to protect your ear gate your eye gate and your mouth gate, which protects your mind and your heart where your faith is. If you keep your eyes pure, your ears pure, and your mouth pure, you get your mind pure, you get your heart pure, then out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth will speak the word of faith and produce a harvest in your future. That's why worry is so dead. Come on, clap like I'm preaching faith today. All right. This is a good crowd. You feel, I feel good here. All right. All right. Can we keep going? All right. What you will eat, so don't worry about what you eat, what you're going to drink. Don't worry about your body, what you'll put on, or how much weight you gain. Just get back on keto. Okay, now watch. It's not life. <laughs> more than food and the body, more than clothing. Then he goes, look at the birds of the air, okay? He goes, study them. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. So they don't even have a really a means to provide for themselves. Yet your Father, your Heavenly Father, I love that word, Heavenly Father, feeds them. Are you not more, more valuable than the birds? Of course you are. Of course you are. So which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit or one inch to your stature? So worry won't make you get taller. Trust me, I tried. It doesn't work. I'm not worried about getting smaller either. Come on. And they say you get older, you shrink. I said, no. I do this every day. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on now. All right, all right. So basically saying worry is useless. It's stupid. I know if little kids in here, they're not going to want to hear that. Okay. So, stupido. <laughs> it doesn't do anything but make everything worse. So worry is, there's no benefit to worry. None. And if you don't worry, people will judge you for not worrying, by the way. You got to be ready for that. Like, you don't care. You're not concerned. Listen, I, it's not that I don't care. I have compassion. But worry doesn't change anything. It only makes everything worse. So why would I worry? I don't want the devil's thoughts in my mind. I, I, I'm tired of his thoughts. Got enough of his, thought, his thoughts. 
All right, keep going. That's good stuff. All right, verse 28. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. And, and, and again, the, 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 look at the grass and everything. The, glor- the glory was not arrayed. Oh, I'm sorry. Or toil or spend. Yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is stolen in the trash, but burned away, he will only much more clothe you. And here's the clincher. Read out loud. O you, O you of little faith. I mean, that's the bottom line. Let's not, let's not sugarcoat things. Let's not get religious or, oh, we're just concerned. No, no. Are you over, overcome with anxiety? Are you anxious about tomorrow? Are you distracted with worry? If you are, you're not in faith. You're not in faith. You're not in obedience. You're in disobedience. You're in sin. And you're in one of the worst sins you can commit. We talk a lot about men, they, they're smoking, they're partying, and, but, but the, I think the two worst sins you could commit are fear, worry, and bitterness. Those are the two, the two worst. Because those sins, the sin of worry, is a magnet of destruction in somebody's life. It will attract the curse as fast as you can. You got to remember, everybody, especially now, fear, worry's at a high. So the curse is high right now. Death, destruction is high. Kill, steal, destroy is high. So it's, it's, it's fat. It's moving. So you jump into that current right now, it'll take you quick. So you have to stand against that whole current right now. See, how th- this thing's going quick now. The curses are, whoo, whoo, and you jump in with them, oh, man, it'll take you down that, the highway of death, destruction, failure, and everything else. You don't want to be on that river. You want to go upstream. Like the salmon. Go upstream. Come on, go against it. Go against it. Go against it. Don't let it just, oh, uh, no. You go against it. You boom. You put your head to the plot. Uh, and you go against that thing. Somebody say faith. 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 Not, not little faith. See, you, you have little faith. You have worry because you don't have enough faith. That means somebody is not paying attention to their internal life. And I understand when you're a baby Christian. I get it. You're a baby Christian. You don't know about these things. So the only way you know is what you used to know. But now you're born again. You have to learn how to walk by faith. Go on YouTube. Some, get some of those old teachings I put out there on faith, the faith walk, and, and the mind wars. You're going to have to learn this. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to conquer seasons like this. And today it's COVID. Tomorrow it may be another thing. And then it may be another thing in your personal life. That's even worse than this whole thing. But in the end, it's faith in God that will get you through miscarriage, faith in God that will get you through death, faith in God that will get you through lack, faith in God that will get you through every negative report, and it's faith in God that will bring you into your destiny, in your purpose, and into your calling. It's faith. Come on. It's faith in God that will bring the right spouse into your life. It's fear that will make you marry the ugly one. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, he's preaching right now. Boy, he's preaching. Fear will make you make dumb moves, man. I've seen it. Like, you're like you know, two, three years later, and you're four years later, five years later. Before, you wouldn't even look that way. You're like, Psh, no way, I'm trusting God. Now, say five years later, you're like, well, Lord, you know, it is what it is. That devil's a liar. How many of you are going to stay in faith? Trust God all the way. Come on, somebody. Faith turns your family around. Faith turns your spouse around. Faith brings you business. Faith prospers your company. Faith brings provision. Somebody shout, big faith. Big faith. Therefore, do not worry saying. So now you know how you take worry. You say it. You say it, and that's how it comes, too, by saying. That's how faith comes. Faith comes by somebody speaking the word. Faith comes by hearing the word. So right now I'm preaching the word is coming. Faith is coming, right? But if you sit there and you listen to all the worry, then worry comes, gets a hold of your heart, and chokes everything good out of your life. What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? And this is God says, for your, for for after all these things the Gentiles go after. But your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. So God says, you're not an orphan anymore. You don't act like that no more. You're not without God. You're not without hope. Before you were messed up. Some of you were drug addicts. 
depressed, without God, greedy, whatever you were, and you were without God, and you had to fend for yourself, you had to fight for yourself, and you had to make, 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 make it, pick myself up by the bootstraps, and I'm going to do what I got to do, and I'm going I'm to survive no matter what. And that was when you were not saved. But now you have a father, you have a papa, you have a daddy, and you have a, a savior, and you have to yield to him. You have to let him bless you and take care of you. And a lot of people, they, they, they don't understand it, so they, they get confused. Because it's a whole new world. You know, it's like a Disney movie. A whole new world. Come on. It's like a new world. It's a faith world with a faith language and a faith currency. See, the currency we have is not do- uh, Visa or MasterCard. It's not dollars and cents. It's not cri- crypto current. Come on, somebody. No, we, the, the currency of heaven is faith. See, that's, that's faith. It's, and you, you get saved. You don't know what the heck this is. But it's, you have it in you. When you got born again, you have a measure of faith. You have to develop that. You have to learn that. You forgive by faith. Huh? You, you believe God by faith. Everything's by faith, and that's how you receive from heaven. See? That's how you receive. But if there's worry, that's how you receive from hell. See, both have currencies. Worry is the currency of hell. Faith is the currency of heaven. If you want to receive from heaven, you got to move into faith. If you want to receive from heavenly Father, you got to move into faith. If you want to receive from the Prince of Peace, you got to move into faith. But if you want to receive from the prince of darkness, you just got to get under worry because that's his world. That's his currency. That's his cryptocurrency right there. And that's why he puts pressure on you and I to get out of faith and to get into worry. So we have to protect our lives. We have to, I mean, you have family that you love, but you can't always let them speak into you. And when my sister Shamar, you know, a few years back, I wouldn't let her speak into me. Now I probably would because she's serving God. She's amazing now. But back then, I won't let anyone. I won't let her talk to me. I love you. God bless you. But you ain't speaking into my life because you, you, you're in that darkness. And some Christians in your life are still in the darkness. You can't, you can't trust what they say. And in this season, you got to be very careful. Not judgmental, not critical, but just, what, what kind of spirit is that? That ain't faith. That ain't trust. That ain't peace. These, no, I trust my God. Come on, somebody. I trust my God. Because you'll mess you up. It'll paralyze you. You won't do anything for God. You'll stay stuck. And then the pandemic will come and go, and it'll take you months to get over the fear. Some of you will never get over that fear if you're not careful. No, you got to get over it now. And when the whole thing lifts, let it lift. But I'm going forward now. I'm not backing down. I'm not going into lack. I'm not going into fear. Heck no. I got the currency of heaven. I'm going to receive from God. What am I going to receive? Everything he promised me. All 5,000 promises. Can I keep going? So we're not going to be overcome. Say We're not going to be overcome with anxiety. We're not going to be anxious about what's coming. And we're not going to be distracted with worry. Matthew 13, 22. This is a spiritual law. Man, I'm teaching. I'm going to take my time. Come on. Matthew 13, my last sermon, so I'm, I'm good. I think I might preach in lifestyle. I don't know. Matthew 13, 22. The one who received the seed that fell among, now this is not good, say the thorns is the man who hears the word, okay? So this person heard the word. They received the word. So they, they received it. They didn't say, I don't trust God. They said, I believe it's God's will, but they couldn't keep it. See? So they believed that it was God's will. They believed it was God's promise to be my father, to be my peace, to be my whatever, my healer, my, pro- my, pro- my provider. They believed, but the problem is they didn't, they didn't, they didn't protect their internal life. So the seed was received, but the problem that was received, the heart was not pure. See, the heart was full of sin. See, and when there's sin in the heart, it actually hinders the development of the word of God. It, 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 it shows you exactly what happens when there's sin in the heart. And it's not sin like you messed up, you know, it's the specific sin. The thorn is men who hear the word and the worries of this life. And the cares and the deception of wealth, distraction, choke it and make it unfruitful. So this person, through worry, uh, watch it, they, they got the word, God's my provider, God's my healer, God's my deliverer, God's my father, he's my prince, he's with us. But then, but then they didn't protect the ear, eye, mouth gate, and they let wrong voices in, and those voices sowed seeds of fear, and those fear grew a tree. And the tree that, that worry grows is called a thorn bush. See? It's not a fruitful tree like the Garden of Eden. It's, it's a cursed tree. It's still a tree. It's like a root of bitterness that comes and chokes out people's lives. Same principle. Worry grows up 
and it gets so big, the word is sown, but it chokes it. It's like, you're not going to live here. Get out of here, faith. And when there's no faith, there's no currency from heaven, and you can't purchase anything from God, even though it's the Father's will to give it to you. That's why you realize it's one of the most dangerous sins in the Bible. Because it'll block forgiveness, it'll block breakthrough, it'll block miracles, it'll block everything good from heaven. I rebuke that, and today we're going to cast that out of you. Now shout amen! So As a matter of fact, jump on your feet right now. We're going to cast this out right now. Come on, get up right now. In your living room, get up, get up. Lift your hands to heaven. We're going to renounce this right now. Say, in the name of Jesus, I recognize worry as a sin of unbelief, as a wicked heart of unbelief. It kept your people out of the promised land. It will not keep me out of my promised land. And so today, I renounce anxiety about the future. I renounce every form of worry out of my life. Every thorn bush of worry that has grown in my life. I say in the name of Jesus, get out of me right now. I renounce you. Get out now. And I ask you, Father, forgive me for the sin of worry. Forgive me for allowing worry into my eyes. Forgive me for allowing worry into my ear. Forgive me for allowing worry into my mouth. Forgive me for allowing worry into my mind. Forgive me for allowing worry into my heart. But right now, I receive the forgiveness of my sin of worry. So worry, you have no authority over my life. Get out of me right now in Jesus name go now give him a shout of praise I said give him a shout of praise now declare this lift your hands greater is he come on greater is he come on greater is he than he that's in the world greater is he in me than the worry in this world I'm not afraid of COVID come on I'm not afraid of COVID I'm not afraid of sickness I'm not afraid of death. I'm not afraid of lack. I'm not afraid of poverty. I'm not afraid of my family. I have no worry. I have no fear because my father will take care of me. Now give him some praise. That ain't no shout right there in your living room. I don't care where you are. Give God a shout. Shout over every worry. Shout over every fear. Glory to God. You can't be scared of COVID-19. You believe God don't get it. If you get it, you beat it down. You put the word on, you rest, and you medicate on the word. You listen to healing every day. You confess healing every day. I'm not, come on. Son. I taught you better than this. You walk by faith and not by sight. I already taught you. Please stay standing. Wow. But I'm not done yet. Because this thing, worry, comes in. And it chokes the word and makes them unfruitful. So now, because I'm not walking in fear, and I tell you right now, this is a season where you want to get your confessions out. Get your prosperity scriptures out. Get your healing scriptures out. I don't got time. Yes, you do. Yes, you got time. You can't even go to the, you can't even go to the movies right now. You got time. Come on, you can't, you can't even go out to eat right now. You can't, you can't even go to the restaurant. You got time now. Use this time. Don't sit there and go, Ugh, no. Use, don't sit there Netflix binge. But no, I ain't, I ain't hating on all that. But you need to take some time and get in the Word of God. And speak the Word of God. Take some hours. Not five minutes, not ten. No, speak that Word. Build your spirit up. I said build your spirit up. Shaka. Build your spirit up. Come on. This season, it's not time to shrink. It's time to expand. It's time to enlarge. It's time to get your spirit yoked out. It's time to do spiritual steroids and build your inner man up. Pray in the spirit. Get big in the spirit. So when sickness comes, get off my body. Disease comes, get off my body. Weakness comes, get out of my life. Why? Because I am not just a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me and purchased me and redeemed me and delivered me and set me free. Now somebody give him a shout. I feel breakthrough. My God. 
Jesus. You know, I feel that song. You know that one, He has rescued my life? How many thank God He has rescued your life today? I said, how many thank God He rescued you? Why is that important? Why is that important? Because if the gangs couldn't kill me, COVID ain't gonna kill me. If drug addiction couldn't kill me, COVID ain't gonna kill me. If this crazy city couldn't kill me, and I, if God delivered you then, won't God do it again? Lift your hands and thank God. Somebody sing to the Lord from your heart. You have. He brought us out there when we didn't even want him. Some of you were shooting needles in your arm. When you didn't even want God, he still was merciful. You have. And I'll never. Somebody begin to praise God in the spirit. You have rescued. You have rescued. Jeff, get up here, sing with me. Come on, come on, come on. Right there in your living room, praise your way through. Praise your way out. So what's my response? What's my response? Huh? What's gonna be my response? What's my response? I got a word from you, devil. It's hallelujah. It's praise the Lord. It's praise the Lord. It's praise. in this place I respond Hallelujah. there's a breakthrough in the atmosphere something is shifting Hallelujah. lift your hands freedom go away it's in the air Hallelujah. Give him the biggest sacrifice yeah. of praise. Hallelujah. Whoa, whoa. Sometimes your praise is a sacrifice. You don't feel like praising God. Neither did Paul and Silas in the midnight hour. But Paul looked over to young Silas and said, what are we going to do? They locked us down and they said, you know what? I know what we're going to do. We're going to sing a little louder. We're going to praise a little louder. We're going to shout a little louder. Don't let no devil steal your shout. God gave you that shout. God gave you that praise. Now give God his praise today. Somebody say yeah! So you know, you know, the way that I, I, I got this sermon, I was sitting in my prayer chair, it just, it hit me and I said, ooh, that's a word, Lord. You know when the Lord gave, ooh, that's ooh. I said, that's for me, but I'll, get, I'll share it. You know, it's that kind of word. You know what I'm talking about? You get a word, you're like, ooh. It's my word, but I got to share it. You know what I mean? I'm your pastor. But this is where I got it. The Lord is with me. So if you want to come looking for Jason, you know where to find me. So I changed and I said, because the Lord is with us, you know where to find us. I'll be in the same place I've been 
for the last 27 years. Because I built my life on Matthew chapter I feel this thing in my soul come on somebody sometimes you just gotta talk in tongues you don't even know how to do it in English come on somebody let me know what I'm talking about sometimes you got English can't even talk about it. just come about your spirit like thank God he's been good Matthew I built my life on Matthew chapter 6 verse number 33 and 34 really I just come out of a terrible drug addiction I try to quit every day I did I couldn't get free some of you have been drug addicts you know some of you are not drug addicts but you're worry addicts we're gonna get you free today come on, come on somebody come on, break that generational curse couldn't get free but I got free and I said Lord you know I don't know a lot of things I don't know the who uh, I can't really read. I can't really write. I can't really talk right. But I'll tell you what. I'm a pretty simple guy, so make it simple for me, Lord. And right here, I'm reading this. And if this is true, then I'm going to build everything right here. And at this time, I got nothing. I got no money. I got no honey. No real girl, good girl wanted me then. You shouldn't have been. Come on. That was terrible. Even though I was saved, I just, I was crazy. And, uh, well, then, I couldn't go back home because they had a death sentence on my life. And I read this scripture. My pastor preached it, and I read it, and I go, you know what? If God could do it for him, I think he could do it for me. It seems like he was like me. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, this is good. That's powerful. It's powerful. This is powerful. In Matthew 6 33, Jesus said, Don't worry, your father's gonna take care of you. But all you need to do is seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So, the way I understood it was whatever God wants to do for my life, whatever he needs me to do. I ain't got much, but here, he's my heart, it's my corazón, it's yours. Whatever you can do, it's yours. And I make a commitment. I, I signed that dotted line. I signed it. And that was it, never looked back. And I'm gonna live as right as I can, do the best I can. And then God said, okay, then everything you need, you don't need to worry anymore, I'll take care of it. And I've done that for almost 30 years. God gave me an anointing. He gave me Liz. He gave me a family. He gave me my beautiful freedom family. He said, don't worry about tomorrow. Pastor, what's the it's uncertain times, Pastor. What's going to happen tomorrow? I don't know. But I know one thing. God is with us. And no matter what happens, with God, we're going to be just fine. Because, you know, Stephen, if he loved me and protected me the way I used to be, how much more now that he's my papa and I want to encourage you if he took care of you when you were even you're not even serving him he took care of you and he kept you alive some of you should have been dead a long time ago but God spared you and he wants me to tell you I feel his anointing he wants me to tell you he loves you and he took care of you then and he's going to take care of you now but he wants you to trust him he wants you to serve him he wants you to put him first. And if you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, 
everything you need is going to be added. Everything is going to be okay because God is with us. Somebody give him some glory right now. We thank you, Lord. for Jesus remember they're looking for Jesus where are you Mary was his mom was all freaked out she's like where are you you're going to church you're gonna get COVID come on what is gonna happen was and he's like why is it that you were looking for me because well, you're 12 years old fool <laughs> he's like nah ma and this is his actual first sermon this is Jesus's first words he ever recorded for the law first mentioned I means it's the most important. So I'm, I'm in good company because this is what I built my life on. He said, didn't you know, Ma, that I had to be about my father's business? She's like, your father is Joseph. He's like, come on, Ma, you know better. Come on, Ma. She's like, okay. And that's where you'll find us. You want to know where I'm going to be? I'm going to be right here. 27 years ago, I made that commitment. I set the captive free. To bring deliverance to the poor. To open up the eyes of the blind. To heal those that are brokenhearted. It's a terrible thing being brokenhearted. And imagine knowing you can help people that have a broken heart. But I wouldn't do that. Go unto me if I don't preach the gospel. I know how to heal people. I know how to help people. I know how to set people free. I know how to bring people back from the dead. Emotionally dead. I'm good at it. And so are you. Don't be distracted by worry. Seek first the kingdom. Be about your father's business. Let's build our papa a building. Let's raise up an army. Let's take more cities. We're just getting started. The best days are not behind us. Our best days are ahead of us. And I believe the best days for America are ahead of us. But I know we're, gonna, we're not going to be limited just to here. We're going to go all over the world and plant these freedom centers all over the world. Come on, Freedom City Church. Because God has a plan. God has a purpose. He rescued us for a reason. He spared us for a reason. He delivered us for a reason. Lift your hands and just worship. And right there, just say, God, help me to serve you. Help me to put you first. Help me to honor you. You spared me for a reason. You kept me alive for a reason. You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. Now You know, Scripture says Jesus told them, Hey, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and finish his work. In Hebrews 10, 9, he said, I come to do your will, O God. In John 17, 4, I've brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. I want to finish what God called me to do. I don't want to just start it. I want to finish it. I want to get the job done. 17 years ago, I was in my bedroom in Pico Rivera and I had an encounter with God and he told me he spoke to me as clear as day I've heard the cries of the people and I'm going to send you to the Pharaoh specific to of the city of Whittier to tell that Pharaoh to let my people go and then he told me clear like you're not the first choice some didn't want it some were whatever you wanted would you do this for you? I said yes sir I'll do it for you of course I will after that encounter I, next morning I had breakfast with my pastor I said pastor this is what the Lord told me he didn't doubt it one bit he said I know he did he said I'm gonna start the church like, okay when I said Sunday he said, Sunday, you have a congregation? I said, no, but I have to do this. He said, okay, I'll support you. We started with eight people. 
my staff at the time and a few drug addicts. Yeah. My keyboard player was one of them. <laughs> and uh, we started Bluebird Art Lounge uptown Whittier. I thank God I didn't quit. I thank God I never stopped. Because if I would have quit, how many of you wouldn't be here or even watching me? You wouldn't have the life you have. Then I think if you quit, you get distracted with worry. And you're only about you and your family. Imagine if I was about me and my own family only. I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to take care of you. What kind of thinking is that? What kind of person does that? No. I take care of my family, and I'm a big enough man to help take care of your family too. And I pray you're big enough too to not just take care of your families, but help all these other families. Because I did it for you, now you got to go do it for somebody else. Come on. You want to come looking for us? You know where I'm at. I'll be about my father's business. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I promise you, God Almighty promises you, everything you need, he's going to take care of it. You may have ups, you may have downs. You may have highs, you have lows. You may have some wins, you may have some losses. But in the end, you're going to come out on top. Because if God, if God is for us, tell me, tell me, if God is if God is for us, tell me, who can be against us? Somebody lift your hands for a few moments and just thank God that he's for us. Let's work. Thanks for watching Freedom. Be sure to check us out on all social media platforms and subscribe to us on YouTube. We hope you enjoyed today's video. We'll see you soon.